Ten years ago, Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples co-created Saga, a sci-fi fantasy of epic and also depraved proportions, and it is one of the greatest comic book series ever created. A personal favorite, so much so that I even cosplayed the will back in 2014. And it's been in print sporadically since March of 2012 and returns now before its 10th anniversary with the long-awaited 55th issue. Following a very intense cliffhanger back when the series went on hiatus back in 2018. So, whether you're just jumping on or in need of a recap, here is everything, well, almost everything, that you missed in just a few minutes. Obviously, major spoilers follow. I'm Dan Umthen, and this is the Doomcast. All right, before we start, do me a favor, hit subscribe and the bell because all the videos that I put out are great. Here we go. Elena craps in Marco's face giving birth to Hazel, their daughter. She isn't supposed to exist at all because Elena is from Landfall, a planet of winged militarized humanoids with advanced tech, and Marco is from Landfall's moon Wreath, a populated by horned militarized humanoids who all use magic and melee weapons. Their war between their people has engulfed the entire galaxy. Elena, a prison guard, was supposed to guard Marco on Cleave. Instead, they made a kid. Nobody from the two species has apparently ever made it and conceived a mixed child because of this and their love, they are on the run from both planets and practically everyone in the galaxy. Wreath sends a mercenary named The Will after Marco. Landfall sends Prince Robot IV after Elena. Elena and Marco are attacked by The Will's girlfriend, The Stock, an erect and lady freelancer but narrowly escape with the help of a dead girl from Cleve named Isabel, who becomes bonded to Hazel, their daughter, in exchange for saving Marco's life after he's wounded. The four of them steal a rocket ship that grows naturally in the forests and escape. The Will has a pet and partner named Lion Cat, whose name is apt because she can tell whenever anybody is lying, and she will say it out loud. They end up on Sextillion, a brothel planet where the Will meets Sophie, a girl he is horrified to discover is a sex slave. The Will kills her pimp and frees her. Elena and Marco meet Marco's parents. Marco and his mom Clara kill a giant after Hazel disappears, while Barr explains to Elena that he only has weeks to live. They rescue Hazel, but discover that the planet is a giant egg that's about to hatch into a singularity called a time suck, and Barr uses magic to save the ship and his family at the cost of his own life. We're introduced to lovers and journalists Upshur and Doff from the newspaper Hebdormadal, and I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. They've interviewed Elena's stepmother and are trying to get Elena and Marco's story as well. The Will's sister, a freelancer called The Brand, poisons them both with the substance that keeps them from revealing information about Elena and Marco. Marco's ex, Gwendolyn, tracks down the Will, and the Will is nearly killed when Sophie stabs him after encountering a powerful hallucinogen. Gwendolyn saves them both and takes them to Quietus, the home of the author D. Oswald Heist, whose books inspired Elena and Marco's romance. Gwendolyn used Sophie's newfound powers to track them there, but Prince Robot IV was already there and unbeknownst to all of them, so were Elena, Marco, Hazel, and Clara. Prince Robot holds Heist hostage. The Will nearly dies of his wound. Clara tries to stop Robot, but he kills Heist anyway. The family escapes Quietus. Gwendolyn leaves the will at a hospital with the brand and takes Sophie and Lion Cat. Flash forward and the family is on Gardenia where Elena has become a part of the soap opera-like show Open Circuit and has become addicted to a drug called Fade Away. Marco almost strays and cheats with a Batgirl named Ginny. Elena and Marco end up fighting over their drug use and infidelity while Elena's new friend Yuma, who is a plant girl, keeps giving her the drug Fade Away. Meanwhile, a robot named Dengo kidnaps Prince Robot's son and murders his wife. Dengo brings the princeling to Gardenia to the open circuit, demanding airtime for his revolutionary message, but Yuma tells him about Elena and Marco. Dengo then invades the treehouse ship and forces Elena to launch with Hazel and Clara. Marco is left behind with Prince Robot and Yuma, the three of whom make for Quietus again to get their tiny boy Gus to help them track the kids. The brand Sophie and Gwendolyn search for ingredients from a dragon to heal the will, but an encounter with one actual dragon kills the brand and nearly kills Gwendolyn. Dengo meets up with the members of the Last Revolution and hostages Elena, Clara, and Hazel. Marco and the robot pursue them while fleeing King Robot's forces who nearly destroy them, and Yuma dies high as fuck, stopping a leak from blowing up their ship. When Marco and Robot find Dengo, Robot kills him and frees Elena, but Clara and Hazel are captured and sent to a landfall detention center. Clara and Hazel meet Petra a trans woman from Wreath who starts teaching Hazel self-defense. Gus now has to fight the now revived The Will, who is also now fat. Uh, Gus cuts off his fingers in defense of Prince Robot. Elena and Marco, Gus, and Prince Robot and his son are reunited with Hazel in a prison break, but Clara chooses to stay behind. Petricor, however, decides to travel with them. Upshur and Doff still pursue Elena and Marco's story, but narrowly escape The Will, who now regularly still hallucinates about his dead spider girlfriend. The family travels to Fang, a comet world about to fall into 
a time suck the singularities that I mentioned from before. Fang is home to a people who look a lot like meerkats and a meerkat boy named Curdy who befriends Hazel. Elena reveals that she is pregnant again, a new freelancer named the March arrives and corners ghost girl Isabel for information on Hazel and the family, but when she refuses, Isabel is dispelled and dies. Marco kills the March and the whole family prepares to flee the doomed comet planet, but the launch causes Elena to miscarry. The Will is captured by Ianthe, a mole woman who is searching for Hazel with a huge grudge against the Will because she was the lover of the guy who he killed on Sextillion. The family goes to Pervious seeking an abortion of the fetus that Elena still has inside of her. Bandits corner the family while Elena realizes that the fetus inside of her is causing her to project a magic image of who the child would have actually been. Petrichor and the robot save the family from the bandits and bond over their gender fluidity. The end wife, a wolf-like creature, removes the fetus from Elena as Marco and Hazel say goodbye to the psychic image of Curdy, the ghost of her brother. They all reunite with Goose, Upshur, and Doff on the pocket world. Robot and Petrichor agree to sell Upshur and Doff the story of Fang's destruction in exchange for new identities for them and Robot's son Squire, but Ianthe arrives with a will in tow as a slave in remote shackles. They find Doff, and in a struggle, Ianthe kills him, but Doff frees the will. Ianthe then panics and reaches Squire, taking him hostage in front of Hazel and Upshur. Elena gets the drop on Ianthe, but is winged, quite literally. Upshur attacks and kills Ianthe. Meanwhile, the will stabs Robot, who tries to weasel his way out of death by selling out Marco and his family. Marco shows up at that exact moment and the will tears Robot's fucking head off. Clean off, literally, and wrestles Marco. The two fall off a cliff into Ianthe's parked ship, which is launched into space. After a tense fight, Marco defeats the will, but spares his life. Realizing that he's up in space, he pauses just long enough for the will to stand up and stab him in the back with what is left of his gloved hand, apparently killing Marco. And that's where we left off four whole years ago, with maybe the most brutal cliffhanger in comics made more brutal by not just their original hiatus, but also COVID delaying the production and release of this book. It's amazing that in a short time, this book is going to be 10 years old. I'm leaving so much detail out of this recap, but it's honestly one of the most endearing, wonderful, and richly imagined comics that I have ever read. And you should absolutely go back and read The Trade or Omnibus again if it's the first time if it's the first time and you just watched this, this whole thing was a word salad that made absolutely no sense. But you should go read the entire thing. You won't be disappointed. If you have a favorite character, issue, moment, single splash panel out of a book full of amazing splash panels, uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again soon. And enjoy the return of Saga.